Hello, and welcome to the third stop on our whirlwind tour of Yee, a place we're calling Crud County. On this stop, we'll introduce basic interaction with the database and demonstrate how easy it is in Yee to create models and manage the data stored in database tables. By CRUD, we mean an acronym for Create, Read, or sometimes called Retrieve, Update, and Delete, or sometimes called Destroy. These are very typical operations that are needed to manage data and content for web applications, and often correspond directly to how data is managed in a relational database using SQL. We will be building upon the simple Hello World application created in the second tutorial in this series. So, if you have not been following along in order, it is recommended that you start at the beginning, Preparation Station, where we demonstrate getting the Yee framework installed, followed by the second stop where we build a simple Hello World application that we'll be building upon in this tutorial. The first thing we need to do to start interaction with a database is to create one. We'll be using MySQL in this example, but you can also follow along using any one of the other many databases supported by Yee. As you may recall from our second stop on this tour, our Hello World application displays a simple greeting on the page. This greeting is currently a string of data that has been typed directly into our greeting controller class. On this stop, we're going to move the storage of this message to a database so that we can more easily manage it and more readily make use of it throughout the application. So let's take a look at this in action. We're going to use the basic MySQL command line client to create our new table and database. So we'll log in, we'll create a new database, and we'll call it ye underscore tour. And then we'll also create a very simple table to hold our message. Just two fields, an ID field, that's an auto increment field to provide our primary key to the table, and a content column that's going to just hold the text message. Create that and exit out of MySQL. Now that we have our database and table created, we need to configure our application to use this database. We make this configuration change in the made config file located at protected config main.php. We'll take a look at this in action. We'll open up our demo application in our text editor. We'll navigate down to protected config main.php. Since we use the Yee console application to create our initial application, the config file already has a database application component configured to use an SQLite database as well as a template for MySQL configuration that is commented out. So we'll just comment out the SQLite database configuration and uncomment the MySQL configuration. Then we can just change the database name and the connection string to the database we created, ye underscore tour, as well as adjust the username and password values to match your settings. Okay, with this configuration in place, we can proceed to create our first ye model class. For this, we'll lean on the code generation tool ye, which was previously introduced when creating the greeting controller class for this Hello World application during the second stop on this tour. I can toggle to the GI tool via the URL localhost demo index.php with a route equal to GI. You must remember to enter the password that you created when first configuring this module. If you forgot what you had as your password, you can just toggle back to the main.php config file and look at where we configured the GI module as a reminder of your password. Okay, so enter your password to get into the site, and this time we'll be choosing the model generator from the list of options. So we choose model generator, and we're now presented with several fields we need to complete. The table prefix field allows you to specify the table prefix if one is being used. In our case, we are using the tbl underscore prefix, and we really don't want this to be part of the name of the corresponding model class that is generated. This is an optional field, but if filled in, ye will ignore this part of the table name when choosing an appropriate name for the corresponding model class. 
We then specify the actual full name of the table for which we are creating the model class. In our case, this is tbl underscore message. We notice as we fill in this field that ye auto populates the model class name field with message. Of course, you can override this suggestion and name it anything you like, but we'll take the recommendation and leave the other fields with their default values as well. As we have seen before, giving focus to any one of these input fields provides for a nice pop up tooltip message. This provides you with more information about each field and this will satisfy your curiosity about what these other fields are for. Finally, we'll click Preview to see a list of everything that will be created and then Generate to actually generate the files. Please note that you will need to ensure that your protected models directory is writable by the web server in order for this to be successful. We now have a new model class named message.php located under the directory protected models, which is the default directory for model class files. So now we have a new model class that models our database table in our application. We can now ask the code generation tool to generate the forms to provide basic CRUD functionality for our messages. So we toggle back to the GUI tool and choose the CRUD generator option. And here we'll fill in the model class with our newly created model class name, message. This will auto-populate the controller ID field to be message. You can, of course, override this with whatever name you like, but we'll stick with the suggestion created for us. We'll leave the other fields as their default values and click Preview to view the files that will be created. There are a few in this case because there are view files for each of the CRUD operations, as well as a controller file for housing our action methods for these operations. Click Generate and we have our functionality. The success message has a link for us to try it out called Try It Now. So let's do that. Clicking the link brings us to a messages listing page. This page represents the R in our CRUD operations as it is reading back and providing a list of all messages in our database table. Of course, since we have yet to create any messages, our list is empty. So let's create a new message. Clicking on the Create Message link in the right hand column actually takes us to the login page. The auto-generated code for CRUD functionality assumes that you will only want authenticated users creating the new content. This may or may not be the case depending on your project and the content, but these authorization rules are easy to configure and change. We'll go ahead and follow along and log in. If you recall from when we first created this application and demonstrated the login logout functionality, you can use either demo demo or admin admin to log in. So we'll use demo demo and once we log in, we are automatically taken back to the page we were initially trying to get to, which is the new message creation page. We see the form is very simple and we only have one field to fill in, and that's because we only created one entry column in our table. So let's fill in a message with, hello, this is a new database driven message. And then click create. Upon successful creation, we are taken to the details page for this message, which provides a simple grid view of our first message. So now we have demonstrated both the C and the R in our message CRUD. And just for kicks, we can also quickly verify that this data actually was saved in the database. Just toggle back to your database tool, in our case just the command line interface to MySQL, and select back the rows from the table tbl underscore message. Sure enough, it's all in there. Now let's try the u in crud and update our message. Click update message and we get a form just like our create form, but it has our message already populated in the text field. We'll alter the message slightly and click save. And again, we are taken to the details listing and we see our updated message. So this demonstrates the update. Now the only thing that's left is the delete. So click delete message and we'll get a little alert asking us if we are sure. We hit OK to test the delete and the result is not exactly what we would expect. 
Rather than deleting the message, we are met with a 403 authorization error. You may have wondered why there were two username and password combinations that we can use to log into our auto-generated application. We have been using demo demo, but we can also log in with admin admin. The purpose of this is to demonstrate very basic user-based authorization. We already saw that some of the functionality was only available to logged in users, but still other functionality, like deletion of records, is often restricted to special administrative users that have been given more access. So, in order to delete, we'll need to log out and log back in using the admin-admin combination. This way, the system will recognize us as an administrative user. So after doing this, we're taking back to the home page of our application. Since we have not altered our main menu items to have links to our message CRUD functionality, we'll have to just type in the URL to get back to where we were. So let's use what we learned about Yi request routing in the previous tutorials to try to guess the URL we need. Well, we definitely know we're in the application, so we'll need localhost demo index.php, and we were in the message controller viewing the details of message number one. So our route is message slash view, and then we have an ID of one. And we can toggle back to our browser and type in this URL to get back to where we were. Okay, now we're back to where we were. We can now click delete message and continue on with the demonstration of delete functionality. Are we sure? We are. Click OK. And our message was deleted. This time, since we are now logged in as an admin, we are taken to a slightly different message listing page. This is a special administrative listing view. This is like a small messages management console where you can sort and search on the messages and all of the CRUD options are very conveniently displayed in line by each message. However, we need to add a few messages to our system to see how cool this really is. So take a minute to use the create message feature and add a few messages. Okay, so after adding a few, we toggle back to the management screen and look at all the features we have. The interactive grid display lets us sort on each column. We can also use the little input fields above each column to search on that column. There is also an advanced search option that provides a different view for searching. We can search on multiple fields here and see the results below. We can also use comparison operators to make our searching more sophisticated. Like searching for ID greater than 2, this will return all the results for which the ID is greater than 2. And there are quick action buttons on each row to quickly view the details, update, or delete that specific row of data. This is pretty fantastic and incredibly useful functionality, and all with barely having to lift a finger of our own. So the CRUD generator has gone above and beyond and provided us with CRUDs. Create, read, update, delete, but also sort and search. But don't worry. Ye won't code your entire application for you. You still need to get your hands dirty in order to build custom applications. The great thing with Ye is that you won't have to waste your time on such repetitive, tedious, and time-consuming tasks like writing and managing the SQL and GUI interfaces to manage the CRUD operations on the database entities that comprise your domain model. You can delegate these boring tasks to Ye and Gi and start right in on the fun stuff like focusing on specific business needs and all the stuff that makes your application unique and compelling to its users. This concludes the third stop on our Yee tour where we have demonstrated connecting to a database and generated basic CRUD functionality against a simple database table. We hope you are enjoying the tour so far and will continue along with us in this multi-part series of exploring the Yee framework.